The bias of an estimator is defined as the difference between its expected value and the true value of the statistic. An estimator is unbiased if the expected value of the statistic is equal to the true value. A really simple example is the sample mean. If we are estimating some attribute of the population, like the average height, we can get an unbiased estimator by sampling randomly some people from the population and taking the average of their heights. And this is an unbiased estimate of the population mean. Most of the estimators you will see in introductory statistics are unbiased, and it's actually hard to come up with an interesting example of an estimator that is biased. The most common example given in statistic courses of a biased estimator is the variance estimator. If we try to estimate the population variance, then the most obvious formula for doing this produces a biased estimator. The expected value of this statistic slightly underestimates the population variance. So that's why when calculating the sample variance, you will always divide by n minus 1 instead of dividing by n. And this version of the formula has the correct expected value, so it is unbiased. This is a very common example of a biased estimator, but actually I think it's not a great example. Why? Because the bias is very easy to correct by dividing by n minus 1 instead of n, so in practice you will always use the unbiased version of this estimator. But this is not generally the case, and if this is the only example you've seen of a biased estimator, you might get the wrong impression that the bias is always correctable in some way. In this video, I will show you an example of an estimator where it's not so easy to correct the bias, and you will actually prefer to use a biased version of an estimator over an unbiased one. But before we go into that, let me share something I've been working on. It is a tool to help you write things using voice. Simply speak your thoughts, and the AI will recognize your voice, add punctuation, and fix the grammar in real time. It uses state-of-the-art speech recognition AI, just like the models I'm describing in this video. I use it every day to write everything so much faster than if I'm writing it manually, including all my emails and my daily stand-up updates. Try it for free at voicewriter.io, link in the description. Now back to the video. Let's take a look at the ratio estimator. Ratios often come up in statistics, because a lot of things we care about are ratios between things. For example, the GDP per capita is the GDP of a country divided by the number of people in the country. I like making YouTube videos. And one thing that I often track in my analytics is the view to like ratio. This is a useful metric to measure the quality of a video while adjusting for their popularity. Here are two videos I made last year. The first video has 29,000 views and 1,400 likes. It has a view to like ratio of 20.7. The second video has 21,000 views and 725 likes. The view to like ratio of this video is 29.0. Since the first video has a lower view to like ratio than the second video, we can say that the first video probably has higher quality. I would like to know the view to like ratio across my whole channel, but it's time consuming because I have to go into each video to know how many views and how many likes I have. Instead of doing all this manual work, I'm going to use a ratio estimator to get an approximation of my view to like ratio across my whole channel. In this case, from the two of my videos that I sampled, I can approximate the view to like ratio in my channel as 23.53. But it turns out that this estimator is biased, especially if the samples are small. To see why, just look at the formula for this estimator. It is a ratio between two expected values, which is not equal to the expectation of the ratio. And more generally, the expectation of a function of a random variable will not be equal to the function applied to the expectation, unless in some special cases, like if f is a linear function. The amount of this bias is well understood, and if you just open a stats textbook, you will find lots of formulas for exactly how much this ratio estimator is biased. And if you go on the Wikipedia page for ratio estimator, it gives you lots of suggestions for how to correct for this bias. But these corrections are mostly of theoretical interest, and they are not commonly used in practice when estimating a ratio from samples. It is more practical to simply use the ratio estimator as is, 
even though it's biased. But why is this? Uh, why should we not try to correct for the bias? The first reason is the bias is simply not very big. Especially as the sample size grows larger, the expected bias is on the order of 1 over n. So as n gets bigger and bigger, the bias of this estimator goes towards 0. In other words, it is asymptotically unbiased. Here is one of the possible ways that you can try to correct the bias of the ratio estimator. And just looking at it, it is more complicated than the original, which is just dividing two numbers. So complexity is a good reason to avoid using formulas like these, especially if the difference is not crucial for the application. To be fair, this argument is not as convincing nowadays when there are so many open source packages available to handle this sort of complexity behind the scenes. But still, in general, simpler is better, and there is a cost to any complexity in you introduce to the model. The last reason to avoid using any correction formulas is a different type of complexity. This formula tries to correct for the bias in the ratio estimator, but to do so, it needs to estimate the sample covariance and variance factors, and not just take a ratio of two numbers. The population covariance is not known, so we have to estimate the sample covariance from the data. The problem with this is the variance of this term is going to be very large if the sample size is small. We can correct for this by taking a larger sample size, but then if we have a large sample size, then it is no longer necessary to correct for this bias in the first place. This is a case of what's known as the bias variance trade-off. It is possible in this case to correct for this bias and obtain an estimator that is unbiased. But this might not be desirable if the variance is too high for the unbiased corrected estimator. In this picture, the blue estimator is biased and the yellow one is unbiased, but the blue one is more useful because the variance is much lower. Remember that the total error of the estimator, or the MSE, is the sum of the bias and the variance. So what we want actually is to get the most accurate estimator, which might not be the most unbiased one. Hopefully this makes sense. For the last part of this video, I'm going to show you a simulation of the ratio estimator. I don't quite have enough videos to demonstrate this simulation correctly, so I'm going to use the data from a much larger YouTuber, Lex Friedman. At the time of recording this video, he has about 800 videos and what we're going to do is randomly sample 10 of his videos and obtain an estimate of the view to like ratio of all his videos. We're going to do this randomly for 10,000 trials. So for each trial, we're going to randomly pick 10 of his videos, estimate the ratio, and then see how that ratio estimator compares to the actual ratio. I coded this up as a quick script in Python, and here are the results that I got. Here's a histogram of the distribution of all the ratio estimates. I've also plotted in the red line the true population ratio of all the uh, like to view ratio of all of Lex Friedman's video, which is 61.43. Normally, you will not have the true population ratio, but the reason I have this is because I actually scraped all 800 of his videos to do the simulation. This allows us to measure how accurate and how biased our ratio estimator is. This is the ratio estimator that is not corrected for bias in any way. So the distribution we see here is slightly skewed and the bias is negative, meaning the expected value of this estimator is slightly below the true value. But still, the bias here is relatively small at negative 0.9. The much bigger problem here is the variance. So depending on which videos we sample, we might estimate the ratio as something as small as 30 or something as big as 160. Relative to the bias, the variance of this estimator is a much bigger problem, so it's not very important to correct for the bias. What if we sample more than 10 videos? Here, I changed the simulation to simulate what if we sampled 20 or 40 videos to estimate the ratio instead of 10. And what we find is both the bias and the variance get closer and closer to zero as sample size increases. In all three of these examples, the bias is a relatively small contributor to the error of this estimator relative to the variance. 
So that's why the bias of this estimator is not such a big deal in practice. That's all I have for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up to help my view to like ratio. This video is more stats heavy and a bit different from the content that I usually make on this channel, so let me know in the comments if you would like me to create more of this type of content or return to my regular focus on speech and language models. That's it, goodbye.